Celeste somewhere. Hi, everyone. I'm here. All right, it is 103 and we have 24 folks here. So, all right, um, good afternoon, everyone. It is the third and final day of our strategic planning retreat. I um, am happy to welcome you all to today's um, event where we are going to do a lot of processing over what we learned over the past two days and we'll spend some time then um, talking about how we'd like to prioritize our own actions. Um, this is a reminder that this is a public meeting. So we have members of the YDC here with us and we have members of the YDD, the staff here with us as well. And in addition, we have some members of the public. Um, because this is a formal public meeting, what we do is hold time at the end of the meeting for members of the public to make a public comment. You have up to three minutes to do so. So if you are a guest today, welcome. We are um, pleased to have you. And if you could email I or text, um, no, chat, if you can send a chat to Lindsay um, and just let her know that you'd like to make a public comment, we will make sure to hold that time for you. Um, we always begin public meetings with um, doing a roll call. And so at this point, I'd like to see, Melissa, are you prepared? I am, thank you okay. so much. Okay, great. Thanks, I'm Melissa Gallardo with the Youth Development Division and I'm the facilitator or administrator for the Youth Development Council. We'll start with Pamela Abernethy. Here. Janet Ahrens. Here. Jaime Arredondo. Zan Ogero. Aisha Tuberi. Eric Cardella. Here. Parasa Chan Rami will be joining us later. Janine Hartley. Here. Alicia Hayes. Celeste Jansen. Here. here. Thanks, Alicia. Here. Andy Leonard. Tabidi Lewis. Adrian Livingston. Present. Christina McMahon. Maricela Ortega Guzman. Present. Destiny Ortiz. Jeff Parker. Jeff said he had to step away, but would be right back. Jeff, Jeff is here. Thanks, Jeff. Molly Rogers. I'm here, thank you. Diana Rojas. Hi there, here. Karen Spencer. Here. John Teague. Liz Thorne. Koi Vu. This is Koi in present. Thank you. Our ex officio members, uh, Nakea Daniels. Sam Co. And the YDD staff, Cord Buker. Hi, everyone. I'm here. Molly Burns. Here. Brian Dutman. I'm here. Bill Hansel. Here. Abraham Magania. I'm here. Sanji Moore. Good afternoon. I'm present. Lindsay Schoonover. I'm here. Anya Sakino. Here. Paul Sell. Present. Ryan Shands. Here. Jared Shaw. Here. All right, that concludes roll call. Special call out to Abraham Magania for making me smile every day during roll call of the retreat. Thank you. All right. Um, we're gonna, I think, turn it over to Karen. And we have 
quite the I'm, I'm actually sending a message to <laughs> we, have, we, have, uh, I, I, we have a process to outline for you and we're gonna just appreciate that some of this you will once you're in your your breakout groups you will have some opportunity to figure some things out together <laughs> and uh, Karen I'll turn it over to you and I'm happy Karen if at any point since Cord and I have spent some time kind of putting together the tools we can help add color so to speak to any of the explanation okay okay wonderful wonderful and uh, melissa is going to uh bring up on the screen share our mission vision and values document and i always like to start with that and i always like to show it to the point where everybody can recite it ad nauseum uh, because it's so important to get it ingrained because by the time you are sick of it here and now as part of the ydd and the ydc is about the time when a lot of these uh, strategies and the priorities and actions that are going to be developed from them are actually going to be percolating out and helping our youth. So uh, if you are uh, not sick of them, just understand that I, my whole goal is at some point that you will be. Um, and not because they aren't great priorities, just because you've inculcated them and brought them into the work that you are doing. So I wanted to uh, uh, start the day with our mission. And I'm, I'm not going to read it all out loud. Uh, for folks who are new to strategic planning, I like to think about the planning process as being a journey. It's about the destination that we'd like to get there, how we are going to guide ourselves uh, on the route, and also what are we taking with us that's going to help us? What resources do we have that um, we are going to be taking with us and what resources are we going to be picking up along the way? So our vision is all of Oregon's youth have the opportunity to thrive and achieve their full potential. Their full potential. And, and, and I've heard that uh, said uh, several times during the course of the last two days. And I, I believe that you know, we spent a year coming up with uh, our mission, vision, and values. And that, I think, is, is the essence of what we've all felt in, in the room about what we want for our youth. Our values are equitable access, equal opportunity, youth-centered approaches and results, inclusion and innovation. And for me, being someone who uh, has always lived in the innovative sector, innovation can come in so many different ways and we are all having to be innovative these days if we're living through the COVID pandemic. It's like, how do I make sure that I get the dog fed, the work done, the laundry done? And uh, by the way, uh, there's a lot of noise in the background, so how do I focus as well? So we've all had to be a little bit creative and a little bit innovative throughout this pandemic uh, as well. And our beliefs are, we believe all youth should have equitable access to support services and opportunities. We believe in anti-racism. We believe all youth should be supported without either replacing or usurping family values. We believe in identifying innovative avenues for youth success. And as we go through today, we should keep these beliefs in mind. Um, and some of them were I remember the from the first moment we came up with, and some are more recent that have been identified, but we should keep all of them in mind. And sometimes these beliefs may be in conflict with each other, or there may be some tension as well as we try to uh, figure out how are we going to do the work that we need to do. So our proposed priorities, we have five of them. Next slide, Melissa, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've heard people uh, over the last two days say them by number, which is great. Um, my dad had some old prison joke related to like all the jokes being numbered, but I, I, I can't remember that, but I will, I will find it sometime so we can do that. Uh, so priority one is identify systemic problems, advance solutions, and support structural reforms. 
Priority two, promote policies and partnerships that expand and leverage resources. The third priority, achieve strategic outcomes through grant making and programs that support youth-centered pathways and practices and affirm identity and safety. The fourth is strengthen YDD, YDC communication and awareness capacity to achieve the priorities, goals, and measurable outcomes. And then there's the what I've heard called the fifth priority, which is internal to uh, the YDD and YDC, which is continue to strengthen YDD, YDC cohesion and inclusion to achieve priorities, goals, and measurable outcomes. And I think one great example of that is the retreat that we've had uh, so far and that we're uh, finishing up today. So uh, at, at the end of today, we are going to have priority be beyond the priorities is the strategies to implement them and actions key actions that we believe should be taken as a council as ydd staff in order to fulfill the mission and vision and that is a really exciting time uh, to be able to do this. And I was thinking about our opening exercise where we talked about being superheroes. And I think there was a couple of people who wanted to be invisible and uh, as their superhero power. And in some ways doing the work today is that you are being that invisible superhero. You are helping a youth to be able to uh, reach their full potential what, whatever that may mean uh, for them. And they, they will not know that you did this work today, but it will have an impact on their lives for the better going forward. And I think that is the best superhero power that you can possibly have. So I'm going to now talk about the practical aspect. We have, uh, we're gonna divide you into five rooms and I'm gonna have to get my, uh, my cheat sheet out so that I remember exactly what it is I had it here. Uh, it is not coming up, so I will I will wing it, and Brian, you will help me like a good news anchor. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you. So what we will do is ha have each of you in a breakout room uh, based on the groups that you were in before. We have apple, peach, lemon, grape, and pear. Uh, it, for the first round, everyone will have 30 minutes to prioritize what you see uh, for uh, uh, under priority one say or two or whichever priority room that you're in. You, what we want you to do is prioritize. What, what do you think is the most important on the list? And then if you have time and if you have an inclination towards it, this is not mandatory, you do get to use a lightning bolt to tell us what do you think needs to be started first? Like if you could start anything, what would it be? Uh, what would that be? You don't have to do it. Uh, you have an unlimited number of, of uh, buckets that you can, or I guess you could call it emojis that you can put on priorities. But what I would ask is for you to reflect that, that we need to hone these down to what is uh, going to most enable the mission vision strategy that we have going forward. But unfortunately, I wish we had money to be able to do everything. I wish we had time to be able to do everything. But part of the planning process is deciding if we have the money and the time, where should we be placing our bets? What is the strongest place to put our bets down? And so in some ways, when you're putting your emoji down next to something, you were saying that this is where I'd like us to place the bet for the future of our youth. Have I missed anything, Brian? Thank you, Karen. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, Melissa has opened the document it's one long Google Doc, and it is organized in the fruit groups and left column. You'll see that thanks to Cord, we've put um, the strategies and actions that we pulled out of 
notes and conversations from the last couple of days. Maybe scroll down a little bit, Melissa, just so folks can see kind of what that looks like. So in some cases, there's just a one overarching strategy. Maybe there's a strategy with some um, related actions. There's in some cases just a um, or orphaned <laughs> action, not because it's a it's bad or good. It's just because there was some specific thing that we that we pulled out. Um, Melissa, if you'll go a little back back up to the not to the very top, but in the middle column, you've got the section where we're going to ask e each group to list the prioritized actions and strategies. Thanks, Melissa, for highlighting that. You've got it. May be you'll have a staff note taker. You can cut and paste um, this the strategies and actions into this column and and put them in an order of priority if that's easier to, to Karen's point if you want to put cut and paste it and then put two or three of your Apple emojis by it and say no this this one is looks is a huge, huge priority whether you put them in order or you put a bunch of emojis by them <laughs> it's up to you the spaces I admit are a little bit tight but we'll do we're doing our best to try to do this in a virtual environment where we you know, we're all on Zoom and we, we, we don't have the benefit of, you know, big sheets of paper and a big room in which to operate. So imagine that you're in that scenario, but you're going to do it virtually. And in the far right, you do have this space for any notes. Um, if you think, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned or thinking a lot about how to measure success, put it into that column. Like, let us know if you have additional thoughts that come up in your, your, um, in your group let us know if there's a oh i think a subcommittee should really be focused on this we would appreciate any of that thinking um i won't make melissa won't scroll down to the bottom but each priority has a table that looks like this we have four rotations so you will be able to look at four priority areas thank you melissa at the top you will not be in all five just because we don't have a ton of time but in your first rotation you will spend 30 minutes um, so that we can have a little deeper dive um, in that first one. And then groups that come after you will have, you know, 20 minutes, but they will have the benefit of seeing the work that the prior group um, did. That's what I'd say, Karen, to that. I don't know. I'll just ask Cord to who helped build this out. If you have any additions, you know, as another commentator in on this newscast. I don't think I do. That was a great um, explanation. I think I was actually curious, like, how do I get more emojis? I just, I was just going to copy and paste the lightning bolt. Is there like a secret emoji um, typewriter in here that I don't know about? You would probably just need to copy and paste the emoji that's in the doc. We, we don't have a special emoji store that you can go to. Oh, it sounded like there was one. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, I think I think maybe just if anyone has questions about how it works, maybe we can try to answer them. Agreed. And I would add, if we, after you've reflected on you know, day one and day two, if we missed a theme and action, um, please you know, make sure to put that in the notes or put it under prioritize actions and strategies. Uh, because I know that sleeping overnight, you may have come up with even more than what we had talked about yesterday. Agreed, Karen. I see a question in the chat from Sanji. Sanji, you're right. Pair group doesn't get to look at priority one. Apple group doesn't look, doesn't, will not look at priority five. Yes, I see that now. There's one left off for each um, yes. uh, group. Gotcha. Yeah, every we just time is a limitation. Uh, I'm just going to say it out loud. Nobody's going to if, if your group finds that you have a little extra time and you want to look somewhere else. Um, that's fine. Don't <laughs> we don't have to be like all regimented about about how this works. And you know, I want you to get through your priority. But if you have a little extra time and in um, one thing, I'll just say generally, like when we break you into groups particularly in that first rotation, give your group, I don't know, five minutes just to read the information. Like take that time to read what's there. 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily say scan the whole thing because then you might lose some time. But yeah, Sanju, we, we have limited time. So um, we'll, we'll get as many eyes on as many of the priorities as we can. Other questions? Any hands up, Melissa or Lindsay? I'm not seeing hands. I'm trying, I can't. Me any. Brian, there's one thing I don't know if you mentioned this, but it's in the instructions for each group that you can add additional actions. You might have, you know, other things are permitted to be added and included in your priorities um, for, for each group as you look at these. Thanks, Cord. Yeah, I think it, it, that's worth noting. And I think Karen kind of alluded to that. Um, but definitely, if you, this is based on the last couple of days. <laughs> There's probably, there are probably ideas um, or things that will come up in your breakouts and you should add them. Um, and even if you, you're not sure where, how or where to prioritize a thing, if you have ideas, whether you get them in the notes or you get them, get them into the into this doc. We, we don't want to, there's no reason to limit um, new suggestions. I think that's, I think that's, that's the explanation. Melissa, um, could probably stop sharing. I imagine we are going to try to send people. Oh, I see Jared has a question. Um, will there be notification? Yes, we will notify you. Um, yeah, so 30 minutes for the first turn, roughly 20. I don't, I'm not sure where we are time wise. Um, but uh, Yes, we will. You'll get a notification. You won't. Ha you won't get m moved out of a group. You'll just be asked to move to the next priority. And you have in the notes for in staff. I think you get you will be critical and being able to access the Go Google Doc and say to folks, okay, according to the rotation, we're moving to this priority next. And I think we've tried to indicate that pretty clearly, kind of um, in the doc. All right, I'm going to stop talking. And just real quickly for guests, um, Elizabeth, I see you. I, I maybe see one or two other folks. We will put you into um, into um, breakout groups. I'm pretty sure, Melissa, to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so appreciate your your being a part of the uh, of the conversation. And in those small groups, we I noticed I know for the last couple of days. Um, our guests have made some really good contributions. So appreciate that. Yes, we'll be adding guests in. And then I see um, uh, Jeff and Liz, I will get you in your groups as soon as possible. Otherwise, we're just about ready to go into the breakout groups. All right, countdown. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Yes. Hey, Bill. Let's see, what group are you in? The Apple group, okay. Look at all this, this is great. Are we, we're back. It worked. Worked. Melissa, I think we should give Melissa and Lindsay like a huge round of applause. <laughs> here, here, definitely. They're awesome. It has been. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both.
I can't believe it. So I think Melissa, and maybe it's maybe a five minute break, not a 10 minute break, because we're a little over time. You know, I'm just cutting out the breaks. But I think we have a, for those, whatever you want to call it, bio break, water in, water out, whatever we want to call it. Oh, Celeste is going to, do you want to say goodbye, Celeste, and then we'll have a little break? Or you just wave? Bye, Celeste. <laughs> All right, so we'll come back at 3.05, and then Karen, we're going to hand it back to you to yeah. kind of do a little bit of reporting out, and I think each group should be thinking about who the reporter is, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks, Alyssa. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, do I get a break since I was late? Everyone gets a break. Thanks. I mean, no, you need to stay on. We have a special assignment for you. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll stay on, Jaime, if you uh, are are reading another story. I think somebody else got another one around here. So. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Coming back. Karen, do you want to um, yep. lead us in the report out process? I, I would be delighted to. So one uh, thing that I think our group had trouble with was the actual prioritization piece of it. Uh, it's just, it just was really tough. Uh, so I, I am going to leave it to Cords because he was the note taker for our group to talk about the themes and some of the key points, things that were brought up from us. Uh, I think we have essentially about five minutes per group. If you did not decide on someone to report out, feel free to fast and furiously um, chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> to designate someone. So I'm going to turn it over to Cord for our group and we were the grape group. Hi, sorry, I'm just getting unmuted here. All right. Um, so I, 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 I started to step away for a second. Are we the first ones to go here? You sorry, are. I volunteered you without knowing that you were back. I apologize. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, I just I just, said, I just got delayed. But I I will go ahead and start off with. Um, so we we started. I believe our first one was priority three. Is that right? I think so. Yes. And uh, just just to let people know, I think you literally have somebody, Melissa, like two minutes. So. Yeah. So I'll just kind of pick a highlight from each of these, maybe just to mention some things that jumped out from each conversation. Um, in this one, a couple of things. I mean, one was um, incorporating, you know, the adolescent brain development um, within that sort of um, spread of, of creative and, and culturally based programming priority. Um, and uh, there was just a question for the other groups, like how else can we really lift youth-centered pathways and practices and af that affirm identity and safety? We felt like there was possibly more that we could do in that area of this particular priority. Um, in priority four, um, I think that we co-signed the, the, the starting the um, strategic planning implementation as being a great first step. Um, but one thing that we wanted to note was that we think that linking the um, strategic and authentic relationships with sovereign governments and other agencies is an important part of that implementation and, and really seeing implementation as um, work that is done in partnership and not just by the council and agency. Um, I will jump down to priority five. This one is so rich. There were so many things. We added a whole bunch of actions. Um, we had a lot of questions. Um, there's a lot of conversation about just how we can do more to really um, strengthen and empower the youth um, council members and, and really elevate um, the council training for the entire council by making the process and, um, and training better for youth members that, that ultimately everything we do that improves accessibility benefits the entire council membership. Um, and then I will hop back up to priority one. We ended up having just a lot of conversation around priority one, but I think that um, we did like, um, there was a comment that another group made um, around creating conditions for grantees and funding priorities that are designed to hold folks accountable for disparate issues. That was just an interesting concept. I think that it's it's worth thinking about what accountability looks like um, within the frame of all the things that we've discussed here as part of this planning. Um, and I'll keep it brief and stop there. So after the grave group was the pair group, is the pair group ready to go?
This is Eric. I'm going to defer to uh, Anya or Molly or whomever has access, or Sanji, whoever has access to the notes. Um, I would just say our pair group was awesome and it was delightful to um, have the opportunity to talk through some of the um, priority language. I would say from my perspective, the overarching theme in all of the areas was just how important it is to reaffirm, reassess our equity lens and make sure that um, equity and um, um, honoring identity and, you know, holding safety kind of uh, of our youth um, as primary focus um, needs to influence all of our, um, our work. So um, I'll, I'll let someone who's got the notes in front of them bring those up, but that, that's, uh, those are our overarching comments. I don't have the notes, Molly. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but you are the one in charge with the notes and the powers, the superwoman's powers. <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> um, thanks. Yeah, so I think Eric summed up that main point that came up in um, every area that we were talking about. I think another um, area that we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, in terms of priority two, um, when we're talking about promoting policies and partnerships that expand and leverage resources, uh, we talked a lot about adding um, a strategy or theme with engaging um, other CBOs, other nonprofits, um, and making sure that when we're talking about sovereign nations and um other state agencies that we're including local agencies county community colleges etc um, so that was kind of a another theme that we are also looking at um, kind of raising questions where that link with post-secondary is coming up throughout these conversations i'd say that would that was the second sub -C theme that came up a few times um, and I'm just checking real quick here. Um, we ended talking, uh, so beyond that real prioritization of resources um, based on an equity lens, lens, we ended up talking a lot at the end about, uh, let me get down to that note for a second um the idea of the ydd as the go-to to what and so in terms of looking at communicating that awareness um, of the organization and um really what we're about to make that clear when people are interacting with our group and I will end on do no harm. So we spend a lot of time talking about uh, trauma from within the juvenile system and that that needs to be a part of the conversation as well. Did anybody else wanna add anything that we miss? You're muted, Judge, I don't know if you're talking. Judge Abernathy, I believe you're muted if you're talking. I'm sorry, I said that all muted. Um, we said to, we would prioritize, we wanted to prioritize explicitly in the action strategies, um, BIOPOC youth and LGBTQ youth within the rubric of, uh, under the rubric of, um, of safety um, and that they were, uh, and actually uh, girls as well, under the rubric of safety to prioritize those groups. Thank, thank you for that. Okay, so now we have the Apple group. Okay. We also asked uh, staff to um, summarize for us, so Jared is going to do that because uh, I have no notes in front of me. Um, we lost uh, one of our members already, um, uh, so I'm sorry that we won't be able to include Celeste's voice directly. But um, 
I just want to say one thing, Jared, before you jump in, and that consistently throughout all of our uh, review, we had a really tough time prioritizing also. We didn't do that very well. Um, but the consistently, the theme that came up was that we need to be clear about what were the go-to uh, agency for, and that we need to have two or three top themes um, um, and values uh, that we uh, promote uh, rather than trying to spread ourselves too thin, because goodness knows there's uh, far too much work to do. So Jared, with that. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so starting at the top with priority one, again, echoing a lot of themes that we're hearing so far, uh, we put a lightning bolt on this one next to commissioning a study or white paper. There was a lot of discussion at this point about really understanding the data. Um, having a really good picture of what the disparities are and especially how COVID is going to impact um, our grantees and youth across the state. So really um, emphasizing data and finding ways to access that data um, so we can make informed decisions. Uh, priority number two. This one we talked a lot about um, how our role at YDD needs to be bigger than just funding and actually diving really into policy work as well. Um, developing a policy agenda and really kind of finding those few things that we want to, um, to emphasize and be the experts in so that we can, in addition to funding, just be those policy experts. Um, and let's see, again, lots of talking about intersections between um, different agencies and um, federal funding as well, trying to leverage that in addition to just resources in Oregon. Priority three. Excuse me while I scroll. <clears throat> um, this was, again, like we talked about, really defining our role. Um, and understanding our lane because there's there's so much um, you know really picking things that we want to do well, and um, also a big theme here was evaluation, making sure that um, that programs understand how we're evaluating them, um, really maybe identifying some core principles and giving grantees tools to be able to um, evaluate themselves and know how we're evaluating them. And again, that goes back to the data conversation and metrics. And then priority four. We talked about determining areas where we would like to be kind of aggressively ambitious. Um, so again, choosing those, those key points that we really want to hone in on. And I think that covers the main points. Anybody else have anything to add? I would like to add just one thing um, that Celeste brought up. One of the key elements that she mentioned as a potential metric and as something we should be striving for is the notion of um, youth belonging um, and that uh, with, with a sense of belonging, um, Comes in and it represents network, it represents connectivity and all of those things that we're trying to get to. Uh, and she would like to see us uh, dig into that a little bit further. She says there's some great research going on and provide us, provided us with a link uh, to a reference. So um, that's something that we might take a look at and could be an organizing uh, element. Thank you for that. And we are now at the peach group. I hope everything was peachy. Everything was peachy. Absolutely. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> uh, so it was a pretty good discussion. I think it was mostly at the 30,000 foot level. So imagine most of yours were. I'm just going to take a, the probably full two minutes to kind of dive in a little bit. So some of the focus of the group was mainly about process and what we can do to improve on really making those youth voices heard, being that advocate for those youth. And then also, what is YDC's story? 
Um, I think a lot of people are really looking for, you know, what is that, that narrative? What is that focus? What is that principal directive? What are we about? Um, and so they're, we're wanting to build on that a little bit more. In terms of priority two, uh, the focus is we're identify on work and awareness of raising of what the YDC and YDD is and identify where we intersect and how we can collaborate and expand and enhance. So those are all key words I keep hearing. Collaborate with partners and stakeholders on trainings, identity, culture, language, bias, racism. Uh, for priority three, it was continuously improving grant making process. How do we make grantees be committed to youth voice and feedback? Can we make a youth led grassroots based feedback loop required for organizations receiving funds? So we always know what those youth, how those youth are doing, what they think about the funding and programming. How, we, how can we create an environment where grantees uh, feel safe in communicating their struggles and challenges in serving youth without jeopardizing funding? And then for priority four, it was strengthen council sense of purpose and role, sustain its collective wisdom and knowledge, make it more youth focused, nothing about youth without youth, develop pathway for council members to engage with staff and learn more about the work. And then we really liked the comment from, I think it was great group, Jared, develop a policy legislative strategy uh, the policy agenda that was that was something that uh, our group liked a lot too um, if anybody else has anything to add for our group for peach feel free to chime in otherwise i think uh i may have captured it hopefully okay i see a thumbs up there so we will move on and I am certain that the lemon group made lemonade. Oh, you took it from me. <laughs> oh, sorry. It was too obvious. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, I'll kind of speak broadly about some of the things we talked about. Again, kind of what's been mentioned before. We talked about equity and uh, the idea around inclusive, inclusivity, right? And one of the, someone we talked about is kind of parents, right? And serving our youth and what role are they playing? Right, within their voice being heard and being included in kind of our policies. I understand we as council members almost have parents, but being a parent of some the, of some of the organizations that are being served, right? Uh, the youth, uh, so hearing from them and their uh, what their voice has to say, right? And part of that also kind of segues into kind of communications, internal and external communications, and how we're again kind of telling the YDD or YDC story. But then again, also how we communicate internally between council, staff, and what we're trying to get across, which also kind of led into this other conversation, right? Again, about what role the council can play legislatively as advocates, right? That was also something that was brought up and how do we do that? Um, that's something that wanted to be explored further. Um, again, kind of with looking at data disparities and prioritizing our resources where we see those is another area that we really talked about. Um, and that's kind of what I recall mostly from the discussions we've had that kind of stick out. I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Prasa. I thought that was really great, Abe. And um, I th the other thing I would add is when we're thinking about engaging more youth on the council and on the committees, uh, we talked about um, what can we do more to remove barriers for youth accessing the different opportunities and provide them with support um, so because there is an opportunity cost at times when uh, you want to be able to dedicate your time on the council and on the different committees. So what are we doing to help alleviate some of those opportunity costs, whether it's through a stipend or other professional development and supports. Um, so that's something we talked about as well. And just again, going back to our um, equity lens and process being the foundation of all of our work and ensuring that it permeates through the plan and uh, the actions that we take. Because um, that was key to what Abe had mentioned in terms of who we're missing at the table, um, who do we need to engage even further, and then um, all the way down to some of our very like basic process pieces. Um, so that's what I would also add uh, to what Abe had shared. Thank you so much, Abe, for representing our group. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Brad. That, that was absolutely wonderful. I, we, we do have, I think, a few moments. If anybody wanted to 
add anything um, as far as the themes go for for the report backs. I, I will shut up for a second and feel free to unmute and then we can go on to the next thing. This is Eric. I'll just reflect um, that we're talking about some very important things and, and very um, exciting work that goes beyond just making grants. So obviously that's a duh statement, but um, I, that gets me energized as a council member to be part of the capital W work. So thank you. And I, I think that's a, a nice uh, segue. Uh, so this time that we've set aside is really to, to reflect on the three days of what we've heard, what we've been thinking, what actions we want to take, sort of next steps from here. Uh, and you know, for, for me, you know, one takeaway that I have kind of mentally is you know, so, so much of what we are dealing with is you know, systemic failure in other places. Um, and that's why there's so much connectivity between the YDD, YDC, and all of the other entities. And those systemic failures um, should not ever lead us to think that the youth that we serve have failed. We have failed them in some big ways. Um, and having their voices come in and making sure that they are represented was something that I really took away from one of the earlier days that we've had. Other takeaways, reflections? I if I may add, uh, just, you know, our, our scope is large. It's very broad, you know, on one side dealing with grants over there now talking about the big W for work and policy. But let's not forget that the other side of our house is juvenile crime prevention, Fourth Amendment jurisprudence and services related to that. So there is quite, I mean, from one end of the spectrum to the other, in terms of our focus, um, where we could identify priorities. So I just wanted to put that out there too, so. Can I make a point? I, I, I like what uh, Ryan just said, um, and I would I would add this caveat that, um, and I know there's no panacea, but the goal could be or should could be, you know, if we really can be effective, we can actually mitigate the amount of work and resources needed to be directed toward juvenile justice, right? I mean, to me, that's, that's a, it, it's, it's a sort of measurement. And, and uh, I know that, again, there's no panacea and there's no 100%, but we definitely uh, should be able to mitigate that uh, in ways in which some of the stuff that we do in those spaces, those resources that are placed on the other side uh, really have the, you know, intended proactive uh, impact instead of reacting uh, and trying to fill deficiencies that got missed because we didn't, you know, and some of these things are out of our control, right? Because there's so many politities that impact what happens to young people that, you know, uh, lead to some of these dynamics. But I just wanted to um, you know, uh, uh, you know, sort of say I'm hearing you, and then just adding that caveat to how we th how we think. Thanks to be. I didn't intend to create silence. I was hoping. Yeah, it's okay. It. I'm gonna. I, I I have learned to give a moment for the introverts, um, mainly because I know that in the breakout groups there was a lot of discussion, and a lot of information. So I'm just um, hoping that if there is a, a, an introvert or somebody who's a little shyer, uh, wants to speak up, to give them the space to do so.
So the next step is just us becoming a bigger agency, right? Getting more funding. Yes, global world domination has always been the strategy. Yes. Not, that's not supposed to say the quiet part out loud. That's oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to next steps, uh, and you know from and and some of this we're just going to have to sort of talk through, Brian. I think in front of everybody, what I'm feeling like is that we probably need to take all of the notes, mesh them together, put them into some sort of an order, and then. Um, then figure out whether we need to bring the full committee back for more discussion or just the strategic planning committee one you know or both um, and and to do that piece of it i think you i think that sounds right i think yeah we're, we're gonna we will need to yeah bring this stuff into the workshop and start making some toys um and then come back I think you said it to the strategic planning committee probably initially and then we have our March um, meeting March 18th if I'm not mistaken I think as a committee we should talk about like what's what we want to deliver then I am I, I hear loud and clear today and I believe I kind of have thought this throughout that since this is an evolving process it's not like we're going to bring you a finalized plan in March. Um, I think we can bring you the next piece, the next product. And we want a living, breathing uh, plan to, to a great extent. But again, we I know we want to like be able to like hit a milestone. So <laughs> so we we should do some conversation again among that the committee, maybe even at the smaller like Heidi, Karen and you know, a few of us will sort of get our heads together, then we'll get the, the strategic planning committee together. We'll come to back to you, um, at, you know, in March and say kind of here's where we're at. And then this has been super helpful and, and, and valuable, so. Yep. And do we have a strategic planning committee meeting on the books, Melissa? I don't think that we do. I will check our records to see if there was one scheduled before I... I. I have a feeling we don't, so we may have to have an impromptu one between now and the 18th. Yeah. Just a heads up for the strategic planning committee members. Yeah, and, yeah. So that's gonna happen. So I, th I think, Brian, with that, we can probably give folks some time back in their day. I think we may be able to do that. What a wonderful thing. Now I do, I know that, um, where's Adrian? She's somewhere on here. Adrian and I have been going back and forth, have appreciated Jaime's stories. I don't know, Adrian had a story that we were talking about her sharing. Adrian, can I put you on the spot? Sure, why not? I can't be invisible here. No, um, definitely I may have enjoyed your stories. Um, was hoping Brian would ask you instead of me, but he didn't. <laughs> and so, um, and also actually being in Andy's session yesterday and just hearing him talk about what he's doing with Warm Springs, like I wanna hear those stories. That, um, I want to visit once we can be in person. Uh, the story I have, it just really, it's, it's one where I don't know if you've heard of the program called Girl Strength, um, but there is a program for girls and women. It's a violence against women prevention curriculum. And I actually became a Girl Strength instructor because what I saw is like, wow, you're teaching these girls that they have value and they can fight for themselves. They can protect themselves. Oftentimes we see in movies and everything like all of a sudden, woo, someone's after me, woo, I can't defend myself. And so with this program, and it's through the Portland Police Bureau, um, they get volunteers, they train us to teach these girls. And one incident stood out to me because it's, you're there in the moment with that youth and you're hoping the curriculum you're taking them through really makes an impact, not just in the class, but afterwards. And there's one activity that we lead the girls through, it's called Define and Tell. 
And so basically, if someone is doing something you don't like, whether it's a friend hugging you because you don't you just you don't like hugs, like how do you tell them and it not be awkward to a teacher doing something inappropriate or someone that's after you that uh, is has ill will? How do, how do you use your voice and tell them? And so basically, it's if something is happening, it's like define what it is. So what it is that they're doing that you don't like, uh, tell them why and then tell them the next action. Well, obviously, depending on who it is, you may be nice with your friend, not nice with the perpetrator. So we have them doing all those different activities. And obviously to talk them through it, yeah, it's gonna go in an ear, out an ear. So we have them practice it. And I was at the Montevilla um, Community Center right on 82nd and Gleason, where some stuff does happen. Um, and one of the young ladies, we were leading them through the activity and we said, we're gonna emulate it. So one of the girls, I wanted her to practice it with me. And as soon as she started, she looked down and I, and I said, look me in the eye. And so she looked me in the eye and I can tell you, it was one of those like, wow, she had so much more confidence when she did that one little gesture. And then she went through the activity. But the more impactful part of the story to me is, so I went off and I was listening to the other, you know, girls do this activity. And all of a sudden, the girl that I had part paired her up with, I hear the youth saying to her, look me in my eye. I was like, what? Wow. I had that youth say it to this girl. So she got to practice it, not just from an adult, but from another youth. And how much confidence comes in that? So for me, where I look at the work I do and it's, you know, sex trafficking and exploitation uh, and how I know that there are pimps that will go into malls and they will test out girls. They'll go to them and possibly say, oh, you have pretty eyes. And the girl that looks him in the eye and says, thank you, he's like, mm, not going to worry with her. She has confidence. But the girl that looks down and says, thank you, that's the target. So, you know, to me, the work that we are doing um, and giving grants to these youth serving organizations and, and the work that you all staff are doing to help us get this money out to them, it is hugely critical for us to prevent some of these things from happening. You know, this lifetime of trauma, you know, going into the juvenile justice system, just as what has been previously mentioned. So um, I just appreciate the work that the staff is doing and that we are all doing as a community, as a family. Jaime had mentioned, you know, we were talking um, about grants and, uh, you know, training the grantees. It was like, can we break bread first? You know, it's like how we are coming together as a family as a community to be better for our kids because we have felt them, the system has felt them. So how can we do that? And so, uh, yeah, that's the story I have to share. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, and I, I, I think for me as, uh, let me try to hold it together. Yeah, you know, as as your is is the director, but I mean, I'm here to serve. Um, we we will always make space for those stories and for those relationship moments, right? Because we need to be connected ourselves, even if it's in this virtual, some kind of antiseptic world. <laughs> we'll be back together, um, but we can always make space for. For, for each other, um, because then that'll enable us, I think, to make the spaces uh, that are you so um, desperate, desperately need, crave, and know actually how to create themselves. We just kind of need to get out of the way um, sometimes. Um, and sometimes they need a little help, a little direction, and that, no, that reminder to look up, you know? So thank you all. I don't know, I know Celeste is not here, and I think, somehow by some rule or some some something a, a council member needs to like actually adjourn us so i will gladly give people time back the meeting is now adjourned thank you everyone for your participation and collaboration thank you thanks guys thank you